is Anjali and in this video I'm going to explain you how to solve question number two of computer science board exam. So this paper which we're discussing is 2017 Delhi board and as we've discussed in the previous video how to solve the question which comes under question number one and in this video we are solving question number two. So let's start with the thing. Basically, when you get your question number two, these are all questions related to objects and classes. So we get four questions in this, total carrying 12 marks. One question is about the OOPS concept that comes for two marks. It's a theory question. Then you get a question on constructors and destructors for two marks. You get a question for four marks for making a class. And then for four marks, we get a question on inheritance, where the code is already given. And we have to answer some questions based on that code. So let's start with the thing. The first question is for two marks that says differentiate between private and public members of a class in context of object oriented programming. Also give a suitable example illustrating accessibility or non accessibility of each using a class and an object in C++. Now as we know private is something which can be used only within the class we can't use it outside the class public members are accessible anywhere within the class or outside the class now how we how are we going to write this answer we'll write like private members of a class can be accessed by member functions of the class only it can't be accessed anywhere else whereas public members can be accessed by member functions as well as non-member functions using an object. Now we have to show this concept with the help of an example since the question is for two marks so example is very important. You must have an example here. So we have class sample where I have taken int a. I have not mentioned the scope that means by default the scope is private and here public. So a is your private member of the class sample and b is a public member of the class sample. Then we have function show where a is 1, b is 2, and then we write c out a, b. So it prints the value of a and b, that is, we print 1 and 2 when show function will be called. So here I can access a as well as I can access b because both are assessed by the member function of the class. So both are accessible, there is no problem. Now we come to main where we declare an object of class sample. We declare the object as s, and when I try to change the value of a using s I have to write s dot a is equal to 5 you will get an error on this that private members cannot be accessed here so you cannot modify the value of a private member through an object from main or anywhere else outside the class so I can't do this but if I do the same thing with b I write s dot b is equal to 5 this statement is very much allowed because it's a public member and public member can be accessed outside the class so that's the difference between private and public visibility mode or access specifiers. So this question is for two marks. So you have to give the definition, example, and if you want, you can explain the example in your words as well. So that is the basic concepts of OOPS. Now the second question, B part, is generally based on constructors and destructors. Like here we have this question. Observe the following C++ code and answer question 1 and 2. So the following C++ code has a class exam where we have data members as long code, then char e name, float marks. Then you have member function 1, which is a constructor. We can see that. And second function, member function 2, is a copy constructor. And then we have main and this. So the first question is, which object-oriented programming feature is illustrated by the member function 1? and member function 2 together in the class exam. Now as we just saw that member function 1 is a default constructor and member function 2 is a copy constructor. Now they are asking which feature is shown together. So that feature is constructor overloading. So we can write member 1 or member function 1 is a default constructor and member function 2 is a copy constructor together we show the 
concept of polymorphism. True. Constructor overloading. Because when we have more than one functions with same name, it's called overloading. So here we have more than one constructor, it's constructor overloading. And the OOPS concept which is supported is polymorphism. Okay, now second question in this is write statement one and statement two to execute member function one and member function two respectively. So we have to declare the object which should call the default constructor. Then I have to declare another object which should call your copy constructor. So for that, I need to declare two objects. If I just write the class name that is exam and I write A. So this is going to call the default constructor. So we'll call function one. That's your default constructor. But if I write exam B and in brackets I write A, that means I want to create another object B with the help of values of A, it will call copy constructor. That's how we can write the two statements. statement 1 and statement 2. So exam A and then for copy constructor B A. So that's two marks for constructors and destructors. Then your third question is for defining a class. Now they're telling you to make a class. Write the definition of a class ring in C++ with following description. Private members should be ring number of type integer, radius and area of type float and we need calc area function to calculate and assign area as the formula 3.14 into radius into radius and public members should be get area to allow user to enter values of ring number and radius also this function should call calc area to calculate the area and show area should display all this so this is the easiest question you get in your exam it's very simple to get four marks in this and it's very easy to define the class so how do we define a class we have to define a class in this so we start with the keyword class. Class keyword is all small. Then you have to write name of the class as it is mentioned in the question. Now we had variables as ring number, as integer, radius and area as float. So int ring number. Then in float I have taken radius and area. Now they told to make a function called calc area in private section only and I will take it as void because it was mentioned that it should assign the value in area. It was not mentioned that I have to return anything. If it is mentioned in the question that you have to return a value then the data type should be according to the return value but here we are not returning anything so it's void. Void calc area what I have to do in this is I just need to calculate the area so that area is equal to 3.14 into radius into radius so just write down the formula that's it you don't have to return anything since the function is of type void now we come to the public section of the class now in the public section they have told us to make get area function which should call calc area and we have to make show area function so not returning anything so the return type is void for get area as well and here I'm supposed to input the ring number so for that I give the out enter ring number and you should enter the ring number in the respective variable for that then I ask for the radius check the radius And then you have to call the function. Now I am defining the functions within the class. Few people just declare the function inside the class and define it outside. You can do either ways. So this is the simple way to do it that you can define the functions within the class over here like this. So I have get area and I have show area. I'll show you the other method also but let me first complete this. So void show area now in show area we just need to show the thing so we can show ring number is 
whatever value we have in ring number then we have radius is and then we have to show the area we show the area and that's it so here we close the function and then we close the class so it's not asked in the question that you should write main and declare an object of ring class so you don't have to do it we can just do till here and stop it so i have defined a function inside the class whatever was required and this is your class that's how we can write the code and if you write it properly without mistakes of a semicolon comma or return types you will get full four marks in this i hope you understood yeah and the second thing i was telling was that you can just declare the functions inside and define them outside so that could be done this way if i just copy this or the other method is that we start class ring and over here you just declare the function you declare the functions and you close the class so this is how we are going to make the functions as outline functions now and here when you define them then you have to write void name of the class scope resolution get area and then write the same code similarly for this one also we'll have void ring scope resolution show area and class is closed above so we don't have to close it here so output is same the working would be same there are just two ways of defining that first you declare the function inside define them outside with the help of class name and scope resolution otherwise you can define the functions within the class itself so any of the two ways you make you have to define a class the procedure is same just a bit of difference in the syntax okay then for four marks you have a question based on inheritance like here the question is answer the question 1 to 4 based on the following here the classes are already given and based on the different scopes you have to tell what is accessible from here like class 1 has these members int a1 float a2 and then we have these functions one is inherited to 2 and 2 is inherited to 3 then we have void main statement 1 and statement 2 is a blank okay now which type of inheritance out of the following is illustrated in the above example we saw that class 1 is inherited to 2 2 is inherited to 3 that means it is multi level inheritance because there are three levels of inheritance possible in this one so it is multi level inheritance so your question number 4 that is d first answer is multi level inheritance okay one mark then second question is write the names of all the member functions which are directly accessible by the object t of class 3 as declared in main function so you have to tell all those functions which can be directly accessible by object 3 now only public functions can be accessed by an object so let's see what all public members class t has so class t has which public members it has get see and show so those are the public members of its own class so obviously they can be called but then we have to see the base classes also here it's written public 2 that means whatever members are public in the base class 2 they also become public of class 3 so in class 2 we have get 2 and show they are public here so they are supposed to be public in 3 as well now we go up and see the base class it's written private 1 that means all the members of 1 which are inherited to 2 become private over here so we can't access them so we'll not go and check those So finally the functions we have are get to get 3 and show is overridden so show so answer for second question will be we can call function get to with the help of the object t we can call get 3 and we can call show so these three functions can be called using the object t of class 3 because these are public member functions then write statement 2 to call function show of class 2 from the object t of class 3 okay this question is not possible we can't do this because when you call 
g dot show it will definitely call the function show which is of its own class that is method overriding is that is the meaning of function overriding that if you have a function with same name in the base class and in the derived class it is called overriding and preference is always given to the functions of its own class so it is going to call show so when i write here it will go to this function only not to the upper one but if from class 3's show function i want to call class 2's show function that is possible and for that i need to write to scope resolution show this statement has to be written in the function in class 3 but not in the main i can't call it with p dot show i have to call it like this within the definition of function show in the class 3 okay so when you have to write the answer for this you can say there is no way to directly call function show of class 2 from object 3 we have to call the function show of class 3 only but indirectly it can call the other one not directly there is no possible way then you have the fourth question that is what will be the order of execution of the constructors when the object t of class 3 is declared inside main now whenever you have inheritance the constructors are executed from the base class so first of all the constructor of base class that is one will get executed then two and then three because when it goes to create the object three there it sees that it has a base class two so it calls the constructor from base class two and when it goes to create an object of two then it sees that it has another base class one so it will call the constructor of base class one so the order of execution will be first constructor of class one is executed then constructor of class two and then constructor of class three so constructor of class one is executed then class two and at the end class three so that's how it executes the constructors and if it is ever asked about destructors then they are executed in the reverse order like first the derived class and then the base class so this is how we answer the questions based on inheritance so i hope you understood how we answer the questions on the basis of classes and objects the pattern is fixed since many years it's coming in the same format your question number two has four parts for sure a part is a theory question for two marks b part is a question based on constructor and destructor for two marks question three is for four marks where you have to make a class question four is for inheritance so this is the pattern which is being followed since so many years and we expect the same to come this year as well i hope you understood the video if yes do like and share and yes do subscribe the channel as well in case of any doubt do write in the comment section thank you